Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming Transformers Studio Series Bumblebee movie, Deluxe Class Brawn. And straight off the bat, this was the most anticipated deluxe release for this particular line, as in my opinion Brawn has one of, if not the most abstract Autobot design that we have ever seen. And much like some of the other Bumblebee movie characters, Travis Knight did an exceptional job in taking the old, blending it with the new, and of course creating this wicked design, which honestly I so hope we can see going forward for the live action movies. And this little Bumblebee movie Brawn may in fact be the best look that we've actually seen for this character model so far as Hasbro and Takara truly have gone all out. Now we'll waste no time at all and get stuck straight here into the details. If you needed any convincing that Braun had an abstract design, just check out that head sculpt. Honestly, so, so unusual, but it's just so iconic and classic to the character. You can see in regards to the sculpting and detailing going on for the mouthpiece, that just looks absolutely incredible. Probably one of the best mechanical sculpts I've seen on this line so far. You can see a fantastic lighter shade of silver used. We've got a really nice blue there for the optics. And I love this almost juggernaut-esque dome that we've got going on for the head comprised out of both gun metal silver as well as a lighter shade of silver around the edges just to amplify some of the sculpt. That is just super, super impressive. We've also got some nice gun metal detailings here for the actual neck brace of Brawn. As we turn our attention to the armpit region, I was super surprised to see that despite this being comprised out of two components due to transformation, it looks super coherent and you can see they're completely picked out in gun metal as we spin our attention to the back. One thing you'll notice in particular for Brawn is that he doesn't in fact actually have any hollow spacing. That's probably down to the simple fact that he is slightly smaller so Hasbro were able to reallocate their budget in really filling this guy out but you can see even here for the back of the legs just loaded with mechanical detailing even here for the actual lower section you can see there what appears to be some springs and hydraulics and then as we flip our attention here to the front of course we've got the Autobot insignia slap bang there in the center this massive orange piece here which of course forms the chest with some nice green paint ups there at the top and here for the legs you can see various different metallic green highlights in order to give you the impression of Braun's armor and I just think the skull work there once more looks fantastic. Now granted of course considering he never converted in the film Hasbro have taken a little creative liberty so you will see the wheels here whereas these are absent on the CG model but I have no issue with that at all. You can see here from the side some exceptional looking sculpt work. I actually really like the foot design for this character as well. Very similar to Bumblebee but they're just so so cool. You can see how they've got the silver gunmetal guard around the edge and of course here for the actual interior of the legs these two have also been fully fully detailed. You can see here for the fingers and thumbs they look great as so does the forearms with these various different holes in order to just give you the impression that of course he is in fact heavily armoured. Now as we go through articulation, sadly we are just merely dealing with a swivel joint here at the head. I was hoping for a ball joint but due to the abstract nature I imagine that probably would have been rather difficult. We do get ball joints here at the shoulders which can rotate the full 360, hinge out to the sides. Sadly we don't in fact actually get a proper bicep cut. It is indeed here at the upper shoulder which does slightly restrict articulation but you can see that it does hinge back and forth. Surprisingly we get a double joint here at the elbow due to transformation as well as a full wrist rotation and luckily the actual mushroom peg is concealed. So once more barely any hollow spaces on this guy we do get a full waist rotation the legs here can kick forwards that far back to that far out to the sides albeit slightly compromised due to the wheel we also do get a rotation here at the lower section of the thigh way past 90 here only on a single hinge joint and once more that exposes some nice detailing and as per tradition it would seem with these b-movie figures we do in fact also get an ankle rocker pivot which can of course go side to side once more exposing some of that terrific detail so overall just thoroughly impressed with him honestly if you can only pick up one of the deluxe figures from this Bumblebee movie line, I would definitely recommend him. He's super fun, really small, but really enjoyable. Honestly, the attention to detail they've packed into him is fantastic, and he actually doesn't articulate that bad either, so definitely a smashing release here. Now, in order to make up for Braun's smaller scale, Hasbro haven't just packed in one accessory, but they've actually packed in two, one of which plays a more key role when we take a look at it in vehicle mode, but we'll very quickly go over it here. You can see this is, in fact, an almost drill piece, and the skull looks fantastic. You can see they're completely coated out of gunmetal silver. He can, in fact, actually hold it here for robot mode if you wanted to, albeit I do in fact find it to look slightly better if you do decide to store it here on the back. And of course we get this awesome blaster, which once again we only get a very brief glimpse of in the movie, but this looks very reminiscent to the one we saw with Cybertron and Wheeljack, albeit it is in fact a brand new sculpt, and you can see the detailing on that looks absolutely fantastic, and I do find it rather comical that the weapon is almost as big as the actual figure himself. So Broad is definitely on the slightly smaller side, but judging from that very brief sequence we saw in the film, he's definitely not afraid to try and at least hold his own. And here for a very quick Cybertronian Autobot group shot comparison, of course we've got Braun compared amongst B127, Cliff Jumper, Wheeljack and Optimus Prime, and certainly the smallest out of the bunch, but in all honesty, probably one of the best. I'd say he's maybe up there with Optimus Prime in terms of how accurate they've actually come to capturing his appearance from the movie. Now, I thought Wheeljack was smashing, but honestly, truth be told, I do in fact actually think I like Braun slightly more, just as he holds together a little better, and is in fact actually a little more enjoyable to pose around. But once again, awesome looking with the rest of the Autobots. 
robots and of course has just such an abstract design and is really likely to be one of the most eye-catching figures we've seen for quite some time. Now turning to the transformation of Brawn, honestly it's just as enjoyable as the actual robot mode itself. So as we spin our attention here to the back, you are in fact going to want to disengage this half, hinge this out like so, and then take these wheels here and in fact click those forwards. We can then come here to the shoulders, you're going to want to rotate those up just like so and you can see here on the inside of this arm we do in fact get a tiny little circular slot that will in fact peg here into this tab so here it is just a matter of bringing that section in and utilizing these double joints here so that we can have it at a slight angle and these will in fact actually snap there into place rather securely come here to this side and of course repeat the same process so just hinge this in like so and of course snap that section in and then just hinge that out to the side so we can then come to the waist rotate here so of course the front is now facing the back take the foot hinge this section down and then you're going to want to come to the shin and in fact actually detach that this tab is in fact held in by this slot so just remove that and we can flip these here all the way around of course come to this side and repeat the same process and then here with the legs you're in fact going to want to rotate here at this rotation which will expose a slot here and here that will peg into these tabs and then we also do get a cutout here where this tab is concerned that will in fact peg into this slot so he does almost transform into a rather weird looking Cybertronian vehicle now we can also take this opportunity to in fact actually dip Braun's head down so just fold that in like so and then here just fold these legs up of course tab that into place first angle this slightly and then shoot this section in like so come to this side and of course repeat the same process so tab that in there and then of course shoot that in just like so and for some finishing touches we can indeed bring in his blaster and then there is a tiny little port there that will in fact peg there into that tab so we can just snap that section into place and there we have Braun fully transformed up into his wicked looking Cybertronian vehicle mode now of course incredibly abstract much like we've seen from the majority of this line but considering this wasn't a mode that we ever saw in the movie I think once again Hasbro and Takara have done a smashing job in taking creative license and I love that it doesn't compromise the look of the robot mode at all now as we actually take a closer look here at Braun in his vehicle mode much like some of the other characters that we've seen across this line a really really awesome vehicle that we never actually saw on screen I think they've taken some great inspiration from those older War for Cybertron slash Fall of Cybertron video games and really giving us this very futuristic alien looking vehicle form. Honestly, this looks smashing. You can see the attention to detail, especially where this cockpit region is concerned, looks exceptional. I love the skull work here where the transparent plastic is concerned. I think the wheel placement is super awesome. Once again, a really funky looking vehicle. Definitely looks as if though maybe it could be a Cybertronian motorcycle. And then as we spin our attention here to the back, you've once again got some of those mechanical detailings of which were exposed in bot mode. Here from the rear, it doesn't also look too bad with the Autobot insignia slap bang there in the center however as we take a look at it here from a bird's eye perspective the illusion is slightly lost considering the way the head actually compresses it does leave this massive gaping hole now granted it is slightly concealed via the blaster but i would have liked to have maybe seen them in fact incorporate a flap of which could have come over and slightly filled this out especially considering the blaster doesn't hold in the best you can see that it doesn't take literally no pressure at all to in fact warp that there especially if you're handling this guy and it will in fact detach but other than that really really well done of course he can roll super freely along the ground and it doesn't end there so of course in bot mode you did see that he came with one additional accessory that being this drill piece you can in fact alter the look here of the front of the vehicle so where this grill is concerned you can indeed actually ratchet this section forward to expose a five millimeter port of which you can take this weapon here peg that there into the front and here you've got brawn with an almost cybertronian driller slash digger piece and this looks wicked i can definitely imagine this guy transforming in the movie and ramming into the decepticons completely mincing up their legs or maybe he's drilling for energon or perhaps a great heist to in fact actually escape Cybertron but really great playability with this guy in both robot mode as well as vehicle mode and it is great to see that all of these vehicles do appear to have some form of unity in regards to how they've been designed really sleek and elegant but of course once again harkening back to what we've come to expect from a Cybertron in design whilst at the same time incorporating their own mix without in fact actually compromising the look of the bot mode at all. Here for a very quick Cybertronian vehicle mode comparison, of course we've got Braun compared next to Bumblebee and Wheeljack, and I think he blends into the overall aesthetic that Hasbro and Takara appear to be going for these Cybertronian characters. He looks wicked, super futuristic, once again harkens back to some of those old Wolf Cybertron slash Fall of Cybertron video games, and honestly, when this line does in fact actually conclude, I'm really hoping that Hasbro can once again take creative license in order to produce some of the characters that we never actually saw on screen in this Cybertronian format, as I think they could be so awesome. Imagine a Bumblebee movie inspired version 
of Megatron. Honestly, the list is endless. And I'd also love to see a Cybertronian take on Optimus Prime, as of course, as it stands, we really only have him in his Earth form. So, some final thoughts for this Transformers Studio Series Bumblebee movie, Deluxe Class Brawn. Overall, I think it's a fantastic figure. As I've said pretty much in all of these reviews, I'm so, so impressed with what the team over at Hasbro and Takara are doing for this particular line. Not only are they replicating the robot modes almost precisely as what we saw on screen, but they're giving them some killer alt modes of which we never actually saw on screen without ultimately compromising the look of them in bot mode. I think these guys are some of the best SS live action figures that I personally have ever handled and I cannot wait to see as to what they've got up their sleeves in terms of the upcoming Ratchet, Ironhide and of course RC. Brawn here in robot mode looks exceptional as mentioned beforehand, a great blend of the old and the new. I think Brawn's design is by far one of the most abstract and of course one of the most unusual Autobot designs in the Transformers history and to see it in fact actually implemented into a live action format just looks tremendous. The mechanical detailing looks great. I think the head design is just absolutely fantastic. The articulation also isn't too bad. I do have a minor qualm in regards to where the actual bicep rotation is placed but other than that I think he's pretty much flawless. The proportions all appear to be on point. No back kibble at all honestly. Literally he looks as if though he cannot transform in robot mode and then when we actually turn to transformation rather simplistic yet incredibly enjoyable and I think it results in this very awesome futuristic Cybertronian almost driller. So overall very very impressive. My only qualm here would be the fact that I don't find the blaster to hold in all that well in this mode but other than that so so awesome. Really really well done figure and I'd love to know down in the comment section below as to what you guys think of this figure as well as of course the review. Are you guys loving this SS Bumblebee movie line as much as I am and what characters do you hope Hasbro do in fact actually plan to do in the future and do you hope that they can in fact maybe pull together some concept ideas. I thank you guys all so much for watching and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.